Okay, guys, I got done showing you how to run the profiles out individually, and that's what we did here inside our full profile stack for all the profiles you ever create. And we ran out four of them, and you saw how that worked. Running out Moji samples, same thing. Now, we were talking about how to use batch files. It's these guys here, and I have these for a whole lot of um, domains that I have access to that I can put projects on, mine and other guys that have granted me access. And the cool thing about this is that you can just build them up you know the same way we're building up these right here um, as you add these in and I have more that's the point I have all these profiles for all these websites going to all these programs then you can turn around and run a batch file on all of these things and so what's the batch file do the batch file automatically runs however many jobs you want with just one push button and that's very cool and very easy to set it up as a matter of fact I'm gonna do one manually so you can see how it works and and it's cool because once you have one and you have them anyway with your downloads then you can make versions of them just by copying them and making little adjustments to say what each next thing it should run would be so watch this if I create a new text file then I can call it something like let's say it's the name of our first thing here so let me just rename so I can copy control C then rename this so I can paste control V okay now it's like a text file that goes with the PFL except it's not very useful as a text file until I turn it into a batch file okay and you'll see how to do that in a minute but here's what I really need to do I need to put in a command that turns this into a single button to run that so I don't have to open it anymore to run it I just want it to run at the click of a single button and that's what we're creating right now our push button now the first part there's like really just three parts to this the first part is we have to run the program itself that means in our program files x86 or program files if you don't have an x86 x86 is the default but if you're on a 32-bit computer you probably don't have one of these you just have program files so you're gonna be searching in there for the same thing that I search for here in the x86 I'm looking for a folder called Moji there it is inside there is a folder called Moji professional you probably don't have these unless you're an older member Moji professional inside there I have different versions that are old and older and stuff but whatever this is the one you're gonna have okay and so we need to get the path to this thing and so if I right click that and hit properties then I here's just a trick to it I can go on the security tab and it gives me the actual object name I can highlight it exactly as it is all the way to the end and copy it now that's cool so now I have the exact path to that program and I can paste it in my little push button now for just safety sake there is a space here so I need to have double quotes around this so that my program knows to treat this all as one thing this isn't supposed to be one command and then another command is supposed to be a single path and that's why it takes double quotes so it's treated all at once then I need a space for the next command you know you can't just have it keep running across it has to be a space and that next command is run it on auto whoops let's spell it right <laughs> and that says we are going to automatically run the program very good except what are we gonna run with the program are we gonna run that or that or that or that or that well we're going to put that in we're gonna say run something what are we gonna run we're gonna run a profile path with a colon and then in double quotes again we're gonna put the exact path to any one of these things and so we need the exact path so I'm gonna do the same thing again I'm gonna right click one of these profiles hit properties hit security grab the object name all the way to the end copy cancel right here boom and then the final double quotes at the very very end all right I just created a push button I can hit enter that's perfectly fine and so I have a complete full line to run okay and so when I shut this thing this thing is a push button except we gotta rename it to BAT how do you do it rename change TXT to BAT batch 
that's bat file, batch file. That's how it goes. See how the icon changed? It is now a push button that runs whatever this thing is supposed to do. So all of the settings inside of here, whatever these settings are, this page with that CSV file, put them here, stick it all here. All right. There's how many files. There's whether to upload. There's the whole FTP path and the username and the password. And on the next uh, tab, it's going to run out this entire URL structure that we have pre-programmed in here. Okay. So all of this is going to be done simply by hitting that button. It will do it right now. So, so we just created this. And by the way, for those of you that don't see those extensions, you can't change them. If you made it this far without hitting our notes about how to do that, here's how you do it. Let me just show you. Hit Organize, hit Folder and Search Options. Okay. Another way to do it is hit Tools and hit Folder Options. It, it goes to the same place either way. And then hit View. And then down here where it says hide extensions for known file types, yours would be checkmarked. If, if I do that and hit OK, it just hid all my extensions. I can't possibly rename them. I could try to fake it by adding one, but it wouldn't be real. Okay. In order to do it right, I have to make sure I see those extensions. Okay. And so organize folder and search options view. Do not hide extensions for known file types. That way you can actually control them. Heck, that thing's on by default just to keep guys who don't know what they're doing from screwing up their own files. But you guys know by now that a dot something on the end means it's a certain kind of file, and you don't mess with that when you rename it unless you mean to um, make a change to it on purpose. Okay, with that said, if I hit it, it'll run whatever that profile says to do. Okay, so I don't want to do it right now. It's going to create another 1,000 pages and upload them, and that's fine. It will create a 1,000 unique pages and upload them to the folder, and that's okay. That's not a problem. It's just you don't want to wait for that. Um, so what do I do to create one for the next one? Let me show you. Let me make a copy of this so I can paste it, and I can rename it to what the next one's going to be, which is the main, right? Rename, Control-C, or any other one. Rename. Boom. Now I just need to edit it, right? Because this needs to be that same thing. And since I just renamed it, it's got the right name. So that's good to go. So it's going to still run the same program on auto, but this time the profile path is slightly different. The whole path from the C drive is the same until it gets to this profile, and that's a different profile. So it knows that. And then that's good. So I can create these buttons for the other two as well. Just copy and create two more real quick. Control V, Control V. And then just do these. Rename, Control C, and just rename one of them. Control V. And then rename the sub. Uh, Control C. I'm not really renaming it. Rename, Control V. I, I was just, there's a quick way to copy and paste, right? So now you see what's going on there. So since that's the last one I did, let me fix that one real quick. And so that's everything but the PFL gets renamed. There we go. That's for the sub. And then the other one's for the main, so let me just do that this way. Okay, so here we go. Boom. And make this word main. M-A-I-N. Okay. And that would be right. And so there we have it. To Moji Dash Pro. Oh, Moji Pro main. That's right. Boom. Moji Pro main. Just got to <laughs> make sure to have it right so we can run it. Otherwise, it won't find it. <laughs> now, that's cool. So I can run any one of these and it'll do whatever those things said to do. Now, the only problem is I cannot just click them all at once, right? Because they will trip over the CSV files. Okay. These two here. So I have to offset the times in which they run if I wanted to run them all at once. I'd have to like start one, wait for a couple of minutes, and then start the next, wait for a couple of minutes, start the next, wait for a couple of minutes, start the next, and wait for a couple of minutes. That kind of stinks. Now, before I get into the fix for that, because there's an easy fix for that, let me show you one more thing. You can run more than one line at a time. I don't want to run it. I want to right click it and hit edit. Or, you know, you might just say open with notepad, right? It would be open with notepad. I can hit edit, all right? I could put these all in one line, 
like I was saying. So I could do more than one. So let me create a new one because these so far are all arranged. I don't want to screw around with them because I want them to be what they're supposed to be. Paste. But I want to make one that I'm going to call, rename, full stack. How's that? Just so I know what it is. I could even call it ZZZ full stack so it always shows up at the bottom, right, of the page. There. How's that? Alphabetically, it would show up at the bottom if this is sorted that way. You know, you can reverse sort anything. But what am I going to put in here? All of them. So let me just start. I'm going to copy, paste, paste, paste. And you can do as many as you want. You don't have to put all of them. You can just do that, though, because why not? The idea is you're trying to simplify everything. So we had one BWN sub, and then we had one BWT main. So let me just do that. It's just quicker at this point to go ahead and hand type it, right? And then we had um, Moji Pro dash main. So two, and that's two Moji Pro dash main. I could even just go ahead and rename it. Control C. All right. Whoop, make sure I don't lose my dot. <laughs> and then to Moji Pro dash sub. I could even rename that. Just anywhere you can get the name will work. Boom. How's that? So now this one file will run them all one at a time. Now we lose time that way because what it means is it's going to run this. It's going to create the pages and then upload all of them before it creates the next pages and uploads all of them, before it creates the next pages and uploads all of them, before it creates the next pages and uploads all of them. So it'll take a lot longer than we would like, right? So the question becomes, how can we deal with that? And the answer is, the original way is sort of better, okay? And the original way with one little twist. Here's my whole stack, okay, for all these different projects, right? My whole stack. And I have something in here called sleep.exe. And you can ignore this other one, delete, okay, because it's not in use. Sleep.exe. This is a cool little program. It's got to be in the same folder as the batch file. Like in this case, it's here because the batch files are here. I can make a copy of this for this, paste, okay? Now, what can I do with it? Watch this. Sleep means, if you run it, it'll sleep for a certain number of seconds. And so we can just use the command to sleep. Now, if we said this was our first one that we were going to run, then we want it to start right away. We don't need it to sleep for any amount of time. It's the first button we're going to hit. But then for the second button, we want to hit it right away, but we need it to wait. So we're going to sleep. This one, even when we hit it, it's going to sleep. And let's say we have it sleep for how long did it take to produce those 1,000 pages? Maybe a minute or something. So that would be like 60 seconds. And if your computer is slower or if you're doing a lot more pages, because, you know, if you're doing 50,000 pages, you got to wait a lot longer. But you can put any number you want in here. So for simplicity, I might just say sleep for 100 seconds before running it. Okay. And then in here, this is the next one down. I'm going to say sleep for 200 seconds. Do you get it? That way I can hit all the buttons at the same time but they each sleep a different amount of time before they run. So now what can I do? And that's all of them. I had the first one had no sleep. That's why it's 100, 200, 300, right? What can I do now? I can hit all four buttons right now and walk away from my computer and it will stagger them. It will start the first run right away, and then 100 seconds later, this one will start running. Then another 100 seconds later, this one will start running, and another 100 seconds later, this one will start running. And that works all at once. So I can go bap, 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 bap. And somebody said, isn't this really hard to read with all the bats and the PFLs mixed together, especially as you get more and more websites? And I said, yes. This is why I created a separate batch folder to put all my batch files into. You can move your batch files anywhere you want. Okay, so I might create another folder just to show you and call it batch two. And this is also why we created the profiles. The profiles 
we put in a separate folder because in here you don't want tons and tons and tons of profiles to be just all gobbed up in here you know that's why I put the profiles in one spot and then the batch files in another so it should be like this cut batch to paste and along with that it should be the sleep cut whoops wrong way because I need that sleep program to be in here for those sleep commands to work do I really need the full stack no I was just gonna show you it so you knew it was possible you can do it you don't need it but I can hit all these buttons right now boom 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 and they'll all do what they're supposed to do and that's the beautiful thing about that and this again is why we created a separate profile stack to have all our profiles in one spot do we really need the project list no this was just a quick way of us checking our projects really fast to see if those front pages appeared if I want I can have that in my verification folder and that's exactly what that is that's for me to quickly uh, like edit replace whatever it is the ending in order to see on Firefox if they exist like say my next project isn't building websites say my next project is um, internet advertising and I run that out on all my profiles it's gonna be internet advertising how can I fix that on here just really simple right whatever was slash building websites just to be exact we're gonna have now we're gonna have slash internet advertising for our next project that we're gonna run out replace and that way I can paste all this into Firefox really quick and easy control A control V wow and that way the next time I start it it'll go to the right pages which of course are all broken right now because there's nothing in there until I run the project which leads me to the next que uh, question the next trick for you guys